When we think of power stations and we think of there's bad ones and good ones, obviously good ones are solar, wind and battery storage, which is growing fast. But then we think of coal and it's the, it's the worst, right? Maybe not. Maybe diesel is even worse. However, diesel power stations, which still incredibly do exist, are beginning to close. It's becoming just economically too expensive for them to stay in operation. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Diesel power stations here in Australia are closing as big batteries and solar is taking over. Renew Economy has just reported that South Australia's remarkable transition to renewable energy, it's really the only the only state, large city in the world, which runs on pretty much solar, a little bit of wind, but primarily solar and batteries. It has happened before. There's plenty of other countries worldwide that use lots of renewables or 100% renewables, African countries, even other places. But primarily it's because they have natural resources like um, the ability to get energy from huge rivers, which they dam. And then they have obviously hydroelectric dams creating a lot of energy. That's usually the reason why big cities are able to be 100% renewable, but it's very hard if you don't have those natural resources, well, it used to be hard to have renewables, but that's changing. The reason it's changing, solar, wind, and batteries, but in particular, solar and wind, the prices have come down enormously in line with Tony Sieber's predictions, which a lot of people thought were insane back in 2014, but they turned out to be pretty much 100% correct. Now, NG have revealed this week they will close two diesel power plants in Adelaide about, um, I believe, four or five years ahead of schedule. And the reason, they're just not economically viable anymore in comparison to solar, wind and battery storage, which have basically kicked them out of the market. The French electricity giant said that it will close the 75 megawatt Port Lincoln diesel power plant and the 63 megawatt snuggery plant in July this year. That's actually technically four years ahead of when they thought they would have to close them, but they're just so economically unviable that it doesn't make sense anymore. And keep in mind, one of the key reasons for them being economically unviable is actually Elon Musk. Now I know that um, a lot of people don't like Elon Musk, but the truth is that he did push South Australia to go towards the renewable energy solution. Originally, South Australia was one of the worst places in the world. They're having blackouts. Their grid um, would often fail. You get people coming home, it's very, very hot there. You get people coming home in the, about 4, 5, 6 p.m. Everyone tries to turn their air conditioners on and the grid would just black out and there'd be no power across the whole state. Well, basically Tesla, Elon Musk tweeted that he would be able to help them solve this problem by installing a battery within 100 days. And he said that if Tesla couldn't install a battery within 100 days, that it would be free, 100% free. Well, that project was completely mocked, derided by our politicians here, by the person who was basically the president of Australia, the prime minister. He joked, he thought it was a joke. He thought he basically um, derided that project. He said it was a big banana. Literally, he said it's a big banana and it will never work. Well, it did work. It worked so well that it solved the blackout problems. And in addition to that, the company which partnered with Tesla to build this battery, they actually doubled the size of that battery because it was making them so much money. And the reason for this is because it was disrupting pika plants. Now, often diesel plants are pika plants. They're used as kind of like instant generators when a grid is struggling. So the grid at, like I said, 4, 5, 6 p.m., really, really hot. Get this in California, get this in lots of hot places around the world. When the grid is struggling, you'll find that pika plants have to be turned on and one of them is diesel pika plants. Well, diesel pika plants are now economically unviable because of the alternative, which is batteries. Battery pika plants can actually be turned on faster than diesel. They're much cheaper and of course, much cleaner. These two power plants used in times of peak demand, meaning pika plants and low supply were supposed to last until 2030. But the pace of the transition to renewables and changes to energy market policies meant that diesel and coal pika plants and generators are no longer financially viable to keep running. This closure comes after the Port Lincoln plant lost $9 million a year contract with the state grid company Electronet and after changes to the federal government's capacity incentive scheme meant legacy fossil fuel generators will no longer be propped up financially. 
Here's the key point. Most fossil fuel power plants now in the West that still exist are being propped up by your government. This is a, a very sneaky secret. This is very, very sneaky. It's untowards. It's dishonest. But the truth is here, most Western countries still have pika plants that are using fossil fuels. And guess what? They are not making a profit. They're not making profits anymore because there's too many renewables coming into the grid. So they're losing money. So the reality is here that if you have a pika plant in your country, very good chance your government is sponsoring that pika plant, sponsoring that coal power plant, that diesel power plant, whatever it may be. It's gas is very often used. Very commonly in more than 90% of cases that I've come across, pika plants are being sponsored by governments. This has to stop. We need to put pressure on our governments to move away from this because it's not like there's not a solution. It's not like we're saying government, F you, turn off these pika plants, screw you. That's quite often what happens with activism. Activists say, you know, F the government, screw the government, to do, you should make these changes, but they don't offer a solution. There's, no, there's often no solution, but now there most certainly is a solution. Batteries and solar plants, it doesn't take 10 years, 15 years for a nuclear power plant to be built. It doesn't take that long. You can replace a pika plant within six months with a battery and solar. But probably just battery is all you really need. You can replace them incredibly, incredibly, even less than six months time in some cases. Like I said, if Tesla did it in a hundred days, that was what? I think it was nearly 10 years ago that they did that. Imagine how fast it can be done now. There is alternatives. There's no reason for Western governments to continue to prop up these fossil pika plants. It only helps, who does it help? No one. It helps no one except for people that are getting some sort of incentives from this. Maybe there's some sort of backhand payments. Maybe there's some sort of interest in terms of lobbying from fossil fuel companies. It has to end. I think we need a campaign for this because there is an alternative. We're not campaigning for something and saying, oh, wow, 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 we're complaining and there's no solution. There most certainly is a solution. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.